Hi, Kevin here, and I want to solve a problem where if I'm given a positive whole number um, that I can, instead of just taking it as a whole uh, number by itself, I want to be able to add up the digits within that number. So for example, if I have 123, I want to want add 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so that should get us 6. And so let me write a function called add digits that um, will receive an unsigned integer that is an integer that can't be negative it won't have that it can't have a negative sign attached to it and it will add up any digits um, of that number and return the sum of those numbers and so let's take a look at this function but particularly i want to uh, attack this problem um, using a technique called recursion. And so recursion is a way that we can um, use this function and refer back to itself. Um, but first, let's try to deconstruct this problem overall to see how could we figure this out. We know that if we have um, this value of number, if it's just a single digit, the answer is going to be that single digit. However, if you have multiple digits in that number, we're going to have to take it one at a time and um, accumulate what its value is going to be. But we know that if we want to just take the very last digit, um, so in the case of 123, that 3 being the last digit, we can always take number mod 10, um, and mod 10 will get the remainder of dividing number by 10, um, and so it will always give us that last digit. And so that helps us deconstruct the problem, is that that will at least get us one digit's value at a time. And then if we ever want to take a number and um, remove that last digit, all we have to do is take that number and divide by 10, um, and then we'll lose that last digit. Um, because integers are always whole numbers. And so let's actually start writing this as a function. And so I want to consider both of those cases. So if our number is less than 10, so in other words, if it's only going to be one digit, then we know this function can just return whatever it is that number has. However, we also need to consider the situation where there's more than one digit. We want to both find the value of that last digit and then also reduce the problem to um, that same number without that last digit and do the problem again. And so we're going to have an else. So in any other case where there's more than one digit remaining, we want to return what... Um, that value was, so I said we can take that number mod 10, which will be the current digit's value, but we want to add that to what add digits would give us if we have um, that number min you know, without that last digit. So again, that number divided by 10. And so I think this might work, but I want to test it out. So let me call this function from int main and print out its results with a few test cases. So I'm going to have a C out. Um, I'm going to call add digits with that value. 123 is, that is a first um, good example. But let me also test it out for, let's say, exam make sure it's working correctly if I give it a number that's just a single value. So I'm going to give it the value 9. Um, and actually, I'm going to add some end lines in our C outs so that um, it's a little bit easier to read the output. Oops. And then let me do one other test case. Let me do something with some zeros in there because zeros might throw us off. Um, and so let's do something like 500. 
Um, and so 500 would be 5 plus 0 plus 0 is 5. Um, 9, obviously, is the value 9. And 123 was supposed to have the value of 6. So let's test that out. I'm going to save what I have. And then down here in the terminal, I'm going to compile this. And let me run it as well. Okay, so we got six, nine, and five. So this seems to be working, but let me try to illustrate this a little bit better about how exactly this recursion is working. And so let's, let's focus in on add digits and let's walk through this case where um, we're passing in um, 123 into that um, parameter for number. So let me over here, let me draw out what's going on. Okay, so let me draw out what exactly it's doing in this recursion. And so first time we call add digits, we're passing in that value 123. And so kind of in that function call, our number has that value 123, and then we're going to look through um, how exactly it's going to be evaluated in this code. So at 123, we're going to compare to 10. 123 is not less than 10, so we're going to go to this else. And so we're going to figure out these two different parts to it. So we are going to return... Um, the value of number mod 10. So 123 mod 10 is three, but we're saying that plus add digits with this new value. Instead of passing in 123 again, we're taking number and dividing by 10. So 123 divided by 10 is, well, it would be 12.3, but since we're dealing with an integer, it's just going to be 12. Which is our recursive call. So that is the function is referring to itself again. So what it's going to do is it's going to call that function. And in this case, number has the value 12. And we're going to go through this code again. So if we walk through how it's going to work is we're going to compare number to 10. 12 is not less than 10. So it's going to skip over the if statement and go to the else again. And so in this case, we're going to return the value um, 12 mod 10, which is the value 2, plus add digits, we're going to call again, and this time we're going to pass into add digits 12 divided by 10. Um, 12 divided by 10 will be 1.2, but since it's an integer, it's just 1. And so it's going to pass in that value. And again, we're going to be calling this function yet again. And so inside this new call of add digits, number has the value 1. And then what we're going to return is going to be a little bit different um, because when we compare 1 to the value 10, um, 1 is less than 10. So instead of doing the else statement down here, we're going to be using what's called our base case in recursion. That is the, the case where you're going to stop. You're not, uh, it's the case where you don't refer back to calling your own function again. So in this case, we are just calling the function, or we're just returning the value of number itself. And so number has the value 1. So we're going to return that value 1. 
And so now that we've figured out this value and hit the base case, you can start thinking about it going back through the previous recursions. Remember, all of these previous return statements said, okay, I've got part of the value, but I wanna add to it an, uh, the result of another function call. Well, now we finally have our final um, function call. So we have this value one. So if we bring this back to this part of the statement, really what this previous call is returning is return two plus that value one. And so ultimately return two plus one is the value three. And so that function call of add digits uh, 12 is returning the value three. And so finally we get to our original function call that will add three plus three. And so it will return three plus three, which is six. So it's giving us back that value of all of those things added together. So let's do a quick little recap, um, looking at this technique of recursion. So as I mentioned before, recursion is a, a, a problem where you ha have written a function where part of its solution refers back to calling that same function again. A key aspect of it is making sure that when you're making that call to its own function, that you're passing in some sort of reduced problem area. You know, we had more digits and then when we're calling it, we're doing, we're doing it with one fewer digit. And so down here where we have our else statement, is what we would call our recursive case. Because we're referring back to this add digits function again, um, right here in that return. Um, and so it, we're reducing the problem and saying, okay, now let's call this function again and uh, make the calculation with that smaller number. And eventually we're gonna to get to a point where we don't need to reduce it anymore. But that's where this base case comes in handy, is you need to think of, okay, our recursive case is going to continue to bite off a piece of the larger problem, but our base case we need to think of is like, at what point are we gonna stop and start just giving the values back rather than continuing to make more function calls. Thank you.